Hey everyone, it's Terry over at Decorate with Tip and More. Today the girls and I are going to do a craft with us. Each of us are going to do our own little crafts, so we are going to give you a variety of things to watch. So after you see my um, craft today, go up and check out Tammy over at Patina and Paint, Kareen, Curly Willow Acre, aka Jump to Gems, Teresa through a vintage door, and Nikki life as a Leo wife. They're all going to do a craft, so I will have them up in my feed. Just go check them out. For my craft, we are going to be knitting with our fingers, our two fingers, a big chunky Christmas stocking. It's going to be a fun process. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half once you get a hang of it, but it's the same um technique that I do when I make my big chunky blankets. So if you don't want to make a stocking, just go ahead and do the knitting process that I'm going to be sharing with you and you can make you a blanket. It's as easy as that. Now there's two um, types of yarn that I um, make my blankets with. Um, it is the Yarn B Eternal Bliss, um, the chunky uh, blanket uh, yarn. Um, you can get the Chanel uh, chunky uh, yarn that looks similar to this, but I got mine at Walmart and um, Hobby Lobby sells those as well. But I'm not going to use this, but this does make a pretty blanket and a stocking. I am going to be using the Yarn B, but this is the showstopper. This is um, more of the wool, the real expensive um, chunky blankets that you see. Um, Hobby Lobby had them for $9.99 and they had them for 30% off. I bought two. I think I'm going to be able to do one with just uh, one yarn, but I'm not for sure because I haven't done it yet. So we are going to um, start knitting our um, stocking. So what you're going to do is you're going to unravel your, um, your yarn. And this is um, going to be the um, end, of course, but this is going to be called the active yarn. Whenever I say active yarn, that is the yarn that we're going to be um, keep using. So what I usually do is just throw my, my ball on the floor because it's going to go all over the place. And then I just bring several uh, yardage up on my working table. Um, and then you're going to go, you're always going to work from right to left. So your end is um, going to be um, in your right hand for now. So I'm going to chain off 11 stitches. Um, and how to do that, we're going to make a slip knot. You want to make sure that your um, end is to the front of your active yarn. Um, and then we're going to make a loop, the active yarn, and thread it through your loop from bottom to top and pull with the end. And then that is your um, slip knot. And you want your slip knot to be no larger than two inches, okay? That's gonna be easy for you to um, create your chain. So you're gonna take your, your loop and you're gonna take your two fingers here and pull your active yarn through and you're always gonna um, thread it through the bottom of the loop um, out, and then you're gonna pull with the end. And you're gonna make sure that your loop is no bigger than two inches all the way down. We're gonna make the third stitch, and we're just gonna keep on doing that until we get to 11 stitches, all right? So you wanna check your work Make sure that all your braids look even. If they don't look even, just um, fluff them up just a little bit. Now the last one is a knot. We don't want to forget that one. Um, so just kind of loosen it up just a little bit so you can get your finger through. All right, now that we have our um, 11 stitches um, created, our little chain, account make sure that you have 11 of those and each braid is a stitch. So we have your loop is always a stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. So we have our, our stitches correct. We want to keep our active yarn at the top of us at all times. Um, and you want it 
in the back of your loop right here. So we're going to jump to the next braid, the next top, and we're going to stick our finger in that top loop, which is right here. If you can see, that's the top loops that we're going to work with. We're going to take our active yarn. I always put my two fingers in. It's easier for me. Um, and then we're going to pull our yarn through that braid. So now we got two loops. This loop is always going to be straight. Don't worry about that. Um, but the rest of them should be right along that chain. So now we're going to go to the next one. Put our fingers through it. Push through the active yarn and make a loop. Now these loops we're going to make about one and a half inch. Don't make them two inches. Um, we want them pretty tight. So now we are going to go to the next one. Pull our active yarn through. Make a one and a half inch loop. Go to the next one. Pull our loop through. Go to the next one. Pull our loop through. Go to the next one. And you know we're going to do this um, until we get to the very end where we have 11 loops showing. All right, so let's count our loops to make sure we have 11. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now, if one of your loops are smaller than the other, just bring it through. It'll take it away from the other ones next to it, but you can just um, play with them until they get to the same size. All right, now, now we're at the end. We're not gonna go um, like we do our blankets where you just keep on feeding on top. Yarn over to where the um, loops are towards you, and then we're gonna flip it to the other side so now that the loops are still towards you, but we're looking at it um, kind of in reverse, we're going to flip the active yarn back on top. All right, so let's count our um, braids. So we have 11 here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and our loops 11. So we're going to take... Um, our fingers and put it through that first braid. Feed our active yarn through. Go to the next braid. And we're gonna do 11 more loops, just like this. So we'll have a loop on top and a loop on bottom. Our 10th one will be that end loop. So you'll have two loops. You'll have two loops at the end. So now you have 22 loops all together. This is the bottom of our stocking. So now what we're going to do is turn. We're always going to want to go from right to left. Remember that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to knit all the way around seven times. I'm going to take a piece of yarn something you can use something and mark the first loop that we um, ended with I'm going to mark a loop so it doesn't go away but this tells me that this is my starting loop so every time I come to this loop that's one round so we're going to skip the one that I just marked okay and we're going to start knitting loops and we're going to do this seven times around to make um, our boot.
All right, now we're at the one that I marked. We're gonna, we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna go through that. And we'll cut that piece of yarn when we're done. That's just to telling me how many um, loops I went through. So we're at one loop and this is what it should look like. And this is the bottom of um, our uh, stocking. So do this six more times and then we'll be back to um, close off our boot. If you counted um, every row, I usually count um, my loops to make sure I have 22 loops here. And if I don't, all you have to do is look back and check to see if there was any um, long, if you could tell about the same distance. If you have one that's like, like that, then you know you dropped a loop and um, it's really hard um, to um, fix it. I'm sure um, there's a lot of people that can, but I usually have to rip it all out to that um, place where I dropped it. I am at the sixth row. I'm going to be doing my seventh row now. You could tell my boot is starting to form. So now you want to make a decision if you want the pattern to look like this or if you want to turn it around and use the kind of the braid, French braid um, look. I want the French braid look. So I'm going to um, roll my um, boot. So this will be the inside of my boot and this will be um, the outside like that if you could tell. So now we're going to start decreasing um, just to close the um, toe in. So we're going to take the active loop, that's the one with the um, yarn, and the one right next to it, the one we just looped before we got to this one, and we're going to take the active loop and put it through that loop. So now we have um, decreased two stitches into one, and then we are going to um, thread the active around that loop. And then we're going to take another one next to it. And we're going to do that same thing. We're going to put to the active loop through that loop. And we decreased it again. And we're going to put that um, acting loop, acting yard through that loop. We're going to go in front of that and we are going to add the loop to that we still got that active loop going it's it's going with us now we're going to take the active um, yarn and put it through that and then go across from it take the next loop run the active loop around and make a loop. So what we're doing is we're just closing the boot, the toe in. All right. To the left of it, run the active loop inside. Make a loop. And then go across. And go through. Make a loop. And we're going to continue to do that going back and forth, back and forth until we have 13 loops left, counting the one that we're working with. Next to it, you might have to um, get the loops a little bit larger, run it through, take your loop, and make another loop, go across. Put your active loop inside, knit, go to the next one in front of it, go through it, Make a loop, 
Let's count our loops and see what we got. 15 um, loops left and we closed in the boot. We're going to skip the, the active loop and then we're going to start doing um, knitting again and we're going to knit um, 15 rows or however long you want um, your boot to be. Since I turned my pattern inside out, I'm doing mine from front to back because um, I'm doing it uh, <laughs> the wrong way because I liked the I like this um, side better. So I'm just doing it opposite. Instead of the back, I'm doing the front. And I'm just continuing to um, do uh, my uh, knitting here until I get to the length that I want um, the body part of my boot um, to be. It's going to be a big boot. But anyway, I'm going to continue to do this. I am on um, row seven and I have eight more rows to go. All right, we're at our last loop. Taking the active loop and the next one, picking, taking the active yarn, bringing it through, going to the next one, always keeping that active loop on top bringing the yarn through both and I'm just continuing to do this all the way until we get to the end of our stocking where we only have one loop. Okay, we're at the last one, the two together. All right, now we're going to take the end, which is very short for me. And we are going to slip it through the knot and tie it off that way. And then I am just going to um, wrap it around some stitches to lose the end. So what do you think about my uh, stocking here? I just love it. It is really heavy. I like that the um, it has a little decorative band there because I was going to make a cuff, but I think it would shorten the length of the boot. And with this being so wide, I need the um, extra length. But I'm thinking now I don't have the right yarn for this, but to add some Dollar Tree beads and make some palms and really dress these um, stockings up. What do you think? What would you do to dress this up? I just love it. But anyway, I do have another a stocking pattern up on the blog. It might be a little bit easier for some to follow a, um, a written tutorial, but it is a little different in making a boot. This one is just a flat pattern where you fold it and then you stitch up with the yarn. Um, it's a no-sew pattern, but um, it's, it's adorable as well. I wanted to give you two options to make a um, chunky uh, boot. So go check out the blog as well. Um, if you like this, please give me a big thumbs up and sprinkle it with your friends. Maybe your friends would like to um, make a Christmas stocking um, for their, uh, their home this year. Also, go up to um, the other girls and see what crafts they're sharing with you. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for watching. God bless.